Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you very much, Chair, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. And thank you to the witnesses. And I would like to th thank Mr. Dan Albus, the leader of my team, for the opportunity to be here today. Today are relevant to uh, report one. And I will also indicate that this information was communicated in a letter to the chair of the committee, of which I am vice chair. Um, TRAN, T-R-A-N, and so uh, this information is specific relative to Report 1 and that letter. So my first question uh, for the Auditor General and her team is that um, within the follow-up audit, you examined a sample of 60 violations uh, in fiscal year 2018-2019 and found that in 18 of those 60 violations uh, that you could not, or pardon me, Transport Canada could not verify that companies took corrective action. And this is a result uh, in an effort to return to compliance. And this is a result of three possible scenarios. Number one, they, Transport Canada did not follow up with companies to obtain the required evidence. Situation number two was that they did not conclude whether violations were resolved despite companies having submitted the required evidence that they took the corrective actions and addressed the violations. And situation three um, was the conclusion that companies had returned to compliance. However, the documentation was not received in an effort to support the conclusion, a very important part of an audit um, as always. So within the first two situations where there was no follow-up or no conclusion, was it the department that did not have an adequate system in place to follow up on those violations? Or was there a system in place that was not being applied? And my second question relevant um, to my first question is, what information was the department using to conclude that companies were returning to compliance? Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. So in our report, we noted that uh, the, the Department of, uh, of Transport had established a risk-based uh, system for identifying the inspections that it would do. However, we, we also found that the information upon which it based its decisions uh, was not always accurate and valid. In terms of the examples um, that, that you raised and the violations, ultimately I would say that we found that the department wasn't following up on, on, the, uh, on the, the incidents of violations that, uh, that had been identified in, in previous uh, reviews by the department. Ultimately, um, I will ask my, my colleague, Kim Leach, to give a bit more detail. But what I would say is that in terms of the, the situations where there, were, there was no evidence that, uh, that violations had been resolved or where the, the, the department had not actually had reached a conclusion that they were resolved without uh, information, that is at a fundamental level uh, a, a failure to keep and, and uh, monitor the documentation. Uh, Kim, would you like to? To add to that at all? Uh, certainly, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Andrew, um, and thank you for the question. Um, yes, yeah, so um, you know you're referring to paragraph 30 <clears throat> in report number one um, of, of the the report that we tabled on October 27th, of course, and uh, you know clearly, um, you know the 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 evidence showed that of 60 violations um you know 18 in 18 of them um in our sample that companies uh, did not were not returned to corrective action um and you know part of the issue and you you, you pointed out the the several um instances in which in which thank you Ms. Leach if you don't mind I think I'll move on to my next question as I uh, I feel you are repeating some of the facts and and I do have other questions to ask thank Certainly. you so there much. was nothing in the file is the answer oh super thank you <laughs> okay. uh, my next question Mr. Chair and uh, dear witnesses is that um, it was also found in the audit that Transport Canada did not routinely collect data from provinces and territories which share responsibility with Transport Canada Canada for monitoring compliance for the transportation of data dangerous goods by road. Why did this occur? Why was this, this data from provinces and territories not routinely collected? Thank you. So the answer to that question is that there are agreements in place with the provinces and one of the territories. It is for Transport Canada, in our view, to follow up with those provinces and territories to collect the information. The, the reasons for, for not following up would be best answered by the department. In our view, they have the tools to be able to, to collect that information. 
Okay, so they do have the tools. Thank you. All right, then I just have a minute left. So I'll go to my last question. I think most relevant and pertinent um, to this committee, which I'm at today, is that a trans, pardon me, is Transport Canada's performance of meeting goal three of the United Nations sustainable, Deve sustainable Development Goals, excuse me, specifically target 3.9, which is to substantially reduce the number of deaths and illnesses from hazardous chemicals uh, with air, water, and soil pollution contamination by 2030. But in fact, the department was not meeting its target of 2%. And in fact, even there was an increase. So how has the department determined that they will now work towards meeting these targets? And why wasn't Transport Canada able to meet these targets, please? You have about 30 seconds. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. So we did identify in the report that there had been a change to the way that they, they evaluated and, and included um, instances in their, their uh, their list of, of uh, the, the rate of reporting dangerous goods releases. Um, nevertheless, they still did not meet the target. So I, I do believe that the department um, is aware and will take, uh, they've, they've committed to take action to reduce Merci. that. Merci. Alors on passe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madame Cousy.